Hello, my name is Ross Souza, and I'm an undergrad student at the University of Maine. I summer interned at Western Illinois University under Dr. Fippen and Tad Wesley. My research question was, how can we improve false stand establishment of field pentacrest with a commercially viable method? Our treatment that we decided on was gibberellic acid, or GA3, because it is inexpensive and very effective. We had a zero hour control and a half hour, one hour, and 12 hour treatments. We had two varieties, a wild type R2032 and a golden seed variety TT8T R1. We had two different locations, Macomb, Illinois and Normal, Illinois. But I will note right now that the data in this presentation is only at Macomb, Illinois. And we had four replications at each of these locations. My field methodology was that we use a randomized complete block design. We planted in the first two weeks of September. We took field measurements of day of emergence, rosette diameter, first pod height, total plant height, floor area, tillering, and lodging. We harvested in the first two weeks of June. We cleaned the seed of dust and debris. We optically seed sorted to sort out wild type seeds and golden seed varieties. And we blew the seed for an extra clean sample in the lab. My lab methodology was that we used the MarvTech seed analyzer, where we measured 1,000 seed weight, seed length, width, area, and area distribution. We used pulse nuclear magnetic resonance to measure oil content, and we used gas chromatography to measure oil constituents. Then we used the R software to find our statistical analysis. In our fear results, we found that GA treatments decreased the number of days to emergence for both varieties. At the 12 hour treatment, we were able to decrease both varieties to under 20 days. For a rosette diameter, we found that the GA treatments only increased the rosette diameter of R2032 significantly, which was increased by over four centimeters. No significance was seen in any other field measurements, and we did not see any abnormal plant growth or deformities, and no differences were found between locations for data. In the red boxes to the left, you will see the GA plots at flowering stage, and on the pictures on the right, you will see the GA plots right before harvest. So the plots on the left, you will see that the 12-hour treatments are well far along in their flowering stage for the R2032, but the zero hours are behind. While in TTAT, all the plots seem to be uniform in their maturity. This is also seen in the harvest stage, where TTAT has similar color in their pods. However, in R2032, you can still see some green in the zero-hour plots. Lab results we found was that in R2032, GA treatment had a significant effect on seed yield and oil content. In seed yield, we saw a nearly 400 pound increase. In oil content, we saw a nearly 3% increase. For TTAT, however, GA treatment had no significant effect on seed yield or oil content. For both varieties, there was no significant changes in oil constituents. Other lab results that we found was that in R2032, GA treatment significantly increased the area of R2032 seeds, which was linked to a seed width increase in the seeds. As you can see on the graphs to the left, you'll see that in the treatments, there is an increase to over two millimeters squared for R2032. However, in TTAT, this significant change was not seen. No difference was seen between these locations. And it's important to note that TTAT naturally has smaller seeds than R2032, as seen in the picture below. For implications of Pinnacrest commercialization, I found that J treatments for R2032 had a dramatic improvement of stand establishment and can be used for researchers and breeders when establishing their wild type plots. For TT18 and R1, GA treatments were not impactful and future studies are needed to assess if this variety benefits from treatments. Future studies that can be looked into for GA treatments include studying commercially feasible treatments with 30 second GA coatings, test other TT varieties such as TT16 or TT2, and test other locations such as Wisconsin or Southern Illinois. Other experience I had on this internship was that I was able to travel the Midwest, got to visit a Wisconsin cheese shop, and I got to load and unload a combine all the time throughout this internship. I would like to thank Dr. Frippen and Tab Wesley for guiding me throughout this entire internship, Tommy Wood for helping me collect data, Mary Fippen for helping me learn chemistry work and learning the software R, Dr. Heller for looking after the plots in Normal, Illinois, and Dr. Mary Brackey for looking after the interns this entire summer. Thank you for listening to my presentation.